To go along with our bar charts that we made last time, I thought it would be good to add another layer of dynamism. That's a word, right? Thanks for joining me. Let's get started. If you want to get super dynamic with the spacing or are just worried that your client will go mad with power and add a million rows at the last second, you just need to do some math. For this example, I'm going to import a new Google Sheet with more data than the last one that we had. Open up your text layer and take a look at the text box size width attribute. We can use this to drive our dynamic equations. First, let's connect that to our rectangle's width attribute. Oh, that's much too chunky. So let's add an expression to slim that down. I'm going to do multiplied by 0.85. Next, we can connect that text width to our duplicator size attribute. Even if the spacing looks okay right now, technically this means that the text boxes are touching, which could look not great in some situations. Let's add an expression to multiply this by 1.1. I'm also going to push the whole thing down a bit as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and like and subscribe. You can connect that to a comment about whatever behaviors or rigs you want me to teach in the future. Now, here's where you have to plan ahead a bit, and this only works within reason. Add a number range named bar count and connect the row count attribute from our data spreadsheet utility into the value attribute of that number range. Then connect the output to the text box width. Also, for this one, we need to flip the graph since the more rows we have, the smaller we want the distance to be between them. For the source minimum, you can put one, and for the maximum, you put the highest amount that you want to account for. In this example, I'm using 25. The minimum and maximum output values, you can sort out by using the offset and testing the data a bit. For now, let's temporarily disconnect the row count from our duplicator so we can quickly scrub through to adjust. You'll also need to connect the count of the duplicator into the value of our number range for this testing. When I only have two bars, 260 looks good. And when I put in 25, 65 looks good. Now the spacing versus the width of the charts isn't really a one-to-one -one scaling factor. So two rows looks good and 25 looks good, but the in-betweens can end up off screen. For me, the fix was pretty simple. Just change the graph to a downward curve from left to right. As I change the values, you can see that things fit nicely. Your graph may need to be different, so just try it out and see what works. Once you've got the numbers you want to use figured out, you'll need to reconnect things to the sheet. Reconnect the row count attribute from our data sheet to the count of the duplicator. And now the Google Sheet once again drives this rig. Obviously, there are limitations to this rig when the numbers get pushed too extreme. The text resizing is nice, but in some cases it's too small or too large, since it's only doing a basic shrink. But these concepts are useful to implement if you think the client may change one or two things last minute. And for a quick texture to spruce things up, just add an image shader to the rectangle's fill, slap a texture on it, resize it as needed. For this texture, I like to set the blend mode to luminosity and drop the opacity to 50%. To get rid of uniformity, let's slap a stagger on the X offset and set that maximum to something crazy, and then slap one on the Y as well. And go ahead and slap that like button. And next time, we eat pie charts.